El Paso County Judge uh, Ricardo Samaniego about to speak live here on ABC7. Let's listen in. County Chief Medical Examiner, Joel Bishop, El Paso County Executive Director of Justice and Community Support, Nicole Farini, City of El Paso um, Chief Resilience Officer. Um, they will, Joel and Nicole will both be providing an update on um, resources for the community today. We will also have um, Commander Ryan Uritia with the Sheriff's Office online as well to discuss enforcement. And we also have Deputy Chief Jorge Rodriguez on the line as well in case there are any questions for him. At the end of the press conference, the judge will also make some comments in Spanish. Judge, would you like to go ahead and get us started? Absolutely. Thank you, Nicole, and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, I believe this is one of the final pleas in trying my best and our best, not only myself, but uh, from the city and the county uh, commissioner's court uh, to plead really with all our community to be prudent this entire next five days. You know, I truly believe that there's nothing more important than for our entire community to prudently and safely handle Black Friday and Thanksgiving holiday. I'll begin telling you a little bit about what's happening across the country and then how does it relate to us here in El Paso. The U.S. could nearly double its current numbers, about 12.4 million reported infections by January 20th. COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations nations, nationwide are exploding with more than 3.1 million infections reported in the U.S. since the start of November. 30 states are showing upward trends in new COVID-19 cases. New Mexico is over 50% in the past week. Just four states are showing downward trends in the entire United States. There were 85,936 hospitalizations reported on Monday according to the COVID-19 tracking project data. The U.S. has also had 14 consecutive days of record-breaking current hospitalizations. The total new cases reported in the last days have climbed over 1.2 million for the first time ever. There were 889 deaths reported yesterday which is the most reported on a Monday since July 27, 2020. July 27, 2020, and I repeat that because it's typically the outcome of how we handle a holiday. In that case, 4th of July. So that was a big picture on what's going on across the country. So let me provide you with an update of our typical, our, our situation. It is important to note that we're dealing with the same phenomenon that is happening across the United States. In other words, this is our reality as a community and as a nation. What we do as a community impacts our nation and what our nation does impacts our, ourselves here, especially when you're looking at the tribal situation that happens during Thanksgiving holidays. As of today, we're still in stage one, which is the worst stage in our path to recovery. 1,257 new COVID cases were reported today, which brings us our total here in El Paso, 82,809 cases. Currently, we have 36,640 active cases that are being reported not including the asymptomatic and, and those that have decided to quarantine without testing. I believe that number would be more accurate at about 40,000. 40,000 individuals have the virus that are part of our community. Health Department salary reported 15 additional deaths today. Our total, sadly and painfully, we have had 877 deaths to date. There are 489 deaths under investigation at this time. There's 304 patients in ICU, 217 patients on ventilators. This is a, those are very difficult numbers, but one of the things I've promised today is transparency and being candid. 
so there won't be any confusion about the situation and the state of El Paso in our region at this point in time. We have 1,500 medical personnel have been sent to help with hospital surge. I think that's a significant number. So I'll repeat that number because I think it'll tell you how difficult things are that we have to bring that 1,500 medical personnel have been sent to help with hospital surge. We presently have 41% COVID-19 hospitalizations in El Paso. It has dropped some, we had 53% just a week ago. At this time, it means that 41% of our capacity in the hospital are COVID related. This includes additional patients at the convention center and other 10 sites that have been set up and the spaces that have been provided inside of our hospitals. To clarify, there are 10 mobile morgues. One is not optional, is operational. There are four mobile morgues at the holding facility. There had been some confusion. So 10 mobile morgues, one is not operational and four mobile morgues at the holding facility. And I'll discuss the holding facility uh, later on in my presentation. We're working on building a temporary morgue in the inside of a designated facility. In order to maintain the respect of our families, we will not at any situation will we be providing the location. El Paso County, the city, OEM, Border Rack have all been working together to plan for the logistical management of this facility. And may I add that our funeral homes have done an unbelievable job of trying to process a very dignified situation for all of the loved ones and all the families that have lost loved ones. It's extremely appreciated. The volume is just immense and they continue to work day and night trying to do the best that they can given such high volumes. We now have 236 loved ones being held in our morgues. 236 loved ones held in our morgues. OAM is coordinating with the National Guard to assist with fatality management. Last Friday, I sent a letter to the governor requesting clarification as to whether or not I can issue a curfew. I have the opportunity to speak to Luis Sainz, the governor's chief of staff, along with a representative from the attorney general's office. It was a favorable discussion and I, I believe that we arrived at the conclusion that I am able to issue a, a, an order and I'll discuss it because it's not the same order and I want this to be very clear that it's a partial curfew it's not as rigid as the one before, and I need that to be clear because we're gonna talk a lot about the balance between opening safe and also making sure that our businesses continue to operate. It's a commitment that I've made to create that balance and to continue going forward in that direction. As you know, my legal authority was limited and I have respected the, uh, the result and what was issued back from the uh, Eighth Court of Appeals. The curfew will go in effect Wednesday, November the 25th, 2020 at 12.01 a.m. So it'll be this midnight, one minute afterwards, the curfew will, will be issued. The curfew will be from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. The curfew addresses, and I really want to be explicit on this, social and recreational activities. The curfew does not apply when, not, when out for essential or non-essential businesses. You will be able to be purchasing, shopping, whatever it is that you need to do of any essential or non-essential businesses under the conditions that are placed. For example, after 9, 9, uh, 9 p.m., 
then we'll have different uh, a different protocol. Shopping is not affected by the curfew as a means to allow stores to remain open for extended hours and minimize the number at one time. We're strongly encouraging for the businesses to open and have a, a wider opportunity for shoppers to avoid any congregation. We're also asking for everyone for the possibility of extending some of the, the sales and so forth that will not allow for people to congregate. We're trying to create a balance on the health of our community and the economy. I'm strongly encouraging El Pasoans and businesses to utilize curbside to go delivery and online services in order to avoid large crowds. I am encouraging big box stores to distribute their Black Friday sales throughout the day to avoid large crowds that may all gather at once for specific sales. If you recall, and, I, and I, I, my heart goes out, and you know, I really want the employees to, to participate and encourage the big box stores. We, we were very successful with signage, one-way aisles, an individual in the front, uh, the ability to, to, to have their, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the hand cleansers, and everything was happening in a very positive way. Somehow we got away from that, so I'm encouraging every store to go back to those practices. The curfew will end on Monday, November the 30th at 5 p.m. I have the opportunity this... this All right, that's the uh, County Judge Ricardo Samaniego speaking live during a news conference. We are continuing to stream that for you on KVA.com and the KVA News app. A lot to unpack. There's some clarification on the mobile morgues. As we reported to you last night, there are 13 mobile morgues right now, not 14. One of them is not operational. 236 bodies currently at the morgues uh, right now. And they are talking about that new facility, essentially a large warehouse that will be converted into a cooler to house more bodies. That is essentially the reality of what is happening in El Paso right now, given the 489 deaths under investigation uh, right now. As it pertains to that curfew that he was just talking about, it goes into effect in a matter of hours now, 12.01 a.m. from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. nightly. It applies, as they say, to social activity. Some questions and clarification we need to get there because, as they say, it does not affect shopping, whether it's essential or non-essential. Um, and this will go through Monday, November 30th. Um, and we will continue to uh, monitor this news conference. You can watch it live right now on KVI.com and the KVI News app. But we're going to step aside, take a quick break, and come back. And we'll bring you any of the latest breaking details here on ABC 7 at 5.